what I wouldn't give for a weekend in Italy right now. We can't do that at the moment, but we can give you a Calcio preview here on Live School. First up, let's take a look at a crucial game at the top of the table, Napoli versus Inter. Dean, even Inter's biggest doubters this season have likely accepted that the Scudetto is going to the San Siro this season, but it's not done yet, and they can't afford to take the foot off the gas here, can they? I don't think so, no. But um, look, I 100% do not expect them to mess it up from here. Look, last season, they finished in second, a point behind Juve. This season, it looks to me like they've learned a lot of lessons since then. This team has grown. I think they'll take the run in game by game. They're not going to get carried away. They'll get over the line. Look, they got Milan and Juve like 11, 12 points behind them at this stage. I can't see them slipping. This is not Atletico Madrid. They're not literally defending the title and losing points as we go along here. Um, so I don't think they'll bottle it. They've just won like nine in a row. Um, but look, Napoli, they've lost just once in the last eight. Um, they beat Roma. They beat Milan in that time. Antonio Conte will be cautious because he knows that he's facing a good team. Yeah, the firepower in, in Napoli is... is is scary. Let's be honest. I mean, between, you know, Insignia, Aussie men, Mertens, Politano, Zielinski, Lozano, it's a long list. It's a list of players that can hurt you in a lot of different ways. And they're so energetic as well to go with that skillful nature and that predatory nature. Look, this is the last, well, this is, this is the first test that Inter are going to be having since the start of March or something like that. Like they played mm. Atalanta back at the start of March. And that was, that was a difficult game. They're a little bit lucky to win that one, one nil since then. The, the opposition has been at a pretty low level. It's been a bit of a canter. So they're going to have to up their game again. They're going to have to refine their top level after basically a month of sort of just trotting along. And I'd be interested to see exactly how easy it is for them to do that, given they have been at strolling pace for so long. Just a side note on Kaladu Koulibaly. Um, he's a man on the hunt for cards at the moment. Seven <laughs> bookings and one red in his last nine appearances. It's, it's a little bit of a mad record, that's Sam. Yeah, yeah, I did have a look at actually back at his previous booking history. He, he does he does tend to hit double figures on the card. So, you know, this isn't completely out of the ordinary. What he doesn't tend to do is hit almost double figures in the stretch of like 10 games. So I'm not quite sure what's happening here. Maybe after returning from a bit of an injury, it's just a, just half half a yard off, shall we say. He's just really, really fired up. Um, yeah. <laughs> that is a must-watch, though, and him against Lukaku is part of a must-watch. And you can watch it right here on Live School if you're in the UK or Ireland. You can also watch Juventus, who are looking to make up a lot of ground on Inter at the top. And it's weekends like this, when Inter travel to Napoli, when they might think there's going to be an opening for them. Unfortunately, from a Juventus perspective, they themselves face Atalanta. And Dean, that's an even harder game than Napoli. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, I mean, look... You Atalanta, the highest scoring team in Serie A, 71 goals. It's the team that you always look for if you're looking to be entertained, right? Um, Sam talks about Napoli's firepower and the array of attacking talent they've got at their disposal, but the Atalanta see your squad and then they raise you because they throw Duvan Zapata at you and, and Luis Muriel and Josep Ilicic. Um, They'll raise you a, a left goal-scoring left wing-back in Robin Gosens and then a mini army of attacking midfielders who will take it in turns to just wreak havoc on your side. Like, you've got pretty much no chance if you're this version of Juve. The old version, yeah, they might have had a chance of, like, holding them out. But this version, they're going to concede at least one, I think. Yeah, it's, a, it's a fair point you raise there, Dean. And, but th there is something working in Juve's favour here. We've, we've come to the conclusion that over the course of the season, Pirlo's tactics, they're a little bit on the reactive side. He's got a, a cluster of forwards in Kudusevsky and Ronaldo and Morata and Chiesa who probably want to play in a little bit more space than a lot of teams afford Juventus. Well, good news for Juve is that Atalanta will give you that space because they will flood forward. They'll commit the bodies, they'll attack and they'll leave space in behind. And I'll just add in here that Christian Romero, who has been Atalanta's best centre-back this season, by a fair distance, is suspended for this game. Now, he's actually on loan at Atalanta from Juventus. He would be able to play in Serie A. It's just England that really carried that rule. But because he's not there and he's not able to sweep up in behind, he is a last-ditch tackling expert. I think they're even more vulnerable than usual to those counter-attacks into space. So they've avoided a slightly awkward conversation having to play against their own prize asset and ask questions about why he might be on loan rather than helping the current team. But also, they take an advantage from the fact that Atalanta are temporarily probably more vulnerable to the type of attack I think Juve actually thrive on. 
Yeah, absolutely. And and let's go from the top to the bottom here and, and cast our eyes at a relegation six-pointer. Uh, there's a big game. In fact, there might not be a bigger game in Europe this season in terms of the ramifications of losing this. It's Cagliari against Parma, 18th versus 19th. If it's not a must-win, well, it is a must-win, but it's an absolutely must-not-lose, Sam. Can you imagine how nerve-wracking this is? Like, I know that there are going to be seven games left after this, but take a look at the Serie A table and it will tell you just how dire it could get for one of these two teams if they lose, and particularly Palmer, right? If Palmer lose and Torino, who are 17th, win, they'd be 10 points off safety and Torino would still have a game in hand. Surely that is just too much of a gap to close. Seven games left or not, how do you recover from that? Yeah, and it's amazing how this can swing as well. I mean, Sam's looking there at the worst case scenario, but let's look at the best, right? Palmer win, Torino lose, the gap to safety becomes four. And that is where the phase six pointer comes from. Like, you know, that's, that's how it works. Basically. It's, it's one of those though. And, and one of these are two giants of the game, aren't they? And we, we talked about this in our, in our Serie A preview show that we're going to lose one of Serie A's giants, it feels like this season. And that's, you know, it, this is where that really comes to a head. And, and it's one of those games I think that you can't miss this weekend. Right. Absolutely. That is all we've got time for on our weekend in Italy. We'll see you soon on Live Scores.